cord blood stem cells are very useful clinically. However, if you didn't have the fortune of storing your own cord blood, can you use somebody else's cord blood for regenerative purposes? Let's review first of all what is cord blood. Cord blood comes from the placenta, from the cord which is attached to the placenta after the baby is born. And before it used to be considered a waste product or they would be disposed of. However, the discovery that cord blood has stem cells which can make new blood cells has led to an explosion in the industry of cord blood banking. So today the primary use of cord blood is in patients in which their bone marrow there is something wrong with it. Cord blood is used as an alternative source of hematopoietic stem cells, has an alternative to bone marrow transplantation. However, cord blood also offers a source of young stem cells for regenerative medicine. What we mean by that is that the stem cells in the cord blood not only can make new blood cells, but can also help to repair injured tissue and this has been shown clinically in patients who have the conditions displayed in front of you. For example, patients with heart disease, uh, they can be injected with bone marrow stem cells in this situation and as you can see on the bottom the injection into the area that's been affected by the heart attack and this is control patients. The dark area represents the non-functioning or uh, malfunctioning myocardium. The heart is not beating properly and as you can see six months after the baseline on the right there is an increase in the number of non-functioning heart tissue. This is a patient who did not receive stem cells. But the patients who receive stem cells, you can see the number of dark areas decreases six months after stem cell therapy. This was published in the journal Lancet three years ago. Uh, peripheral artery disease results in a lot of amputations of the lower leg. And um, the concept is in the box on the left hand side. If you inject stem cells from the bone marrow, hopefully you'll get new blood vessels. On the left is the patient, an angiogram of the patient before stem cells. On the right, you can see a lot more new blood vessels. This was published in the same journal, uh, Lancet, in 2002. Uh, liver failure. The worse your liver failure is, the higher your child Pew score is going to increase. Here is the child Pew score of nine people who were treated with stem cells from the bone marrow. And as you can see, it decreased significantly after four weeks and after 24 weeks after stem cell therapy. Crohn's disease is an inflammatory disease of the gut and stem cells were used by the company Osiris under the FDA to um, treat patients with this disease who are non-responsive to immune suppression. These patients on average had Crohn's disease for 14 years before entering the trial. After treated with stem cells, or bone marrow derived mesenchymal stem cells, 100% of the patients experienced reduction in CDAI, which is the Crohn's disease activity index, and 33% of the patients had a very significant clinical improvement uh, in within 14 days, an improvement of 100 points. Graves' host disease is a lethal uh, it's a lethal condition where the transplanted cells begin attacking the body and as you can see our control patients, 16 control patients, they succumbed to the disease. They passed away between one and one and a half years after, after, receiving, um, after receiving the hematopoietic cell transplant. Uh, whereas uh, patients who received the hematopoietic stem cell transplant but also uh, had, bone, had bone marrow mesenchymal cells, of the eight patients, 40% of them lived longer than three years. So from the previous conditions we talked about, we can see that stem cells can cause regeneration and can help a wide variety of other diseases besides just uh, making new blood cells. But the stem cells that were used were adult bone marrow stem cells. Cord blood is an alternative source for making new blood cells, but it's also an alternative source for regenerating other organs. Uh, for example, why it's better is because number one, the cells are younger and they have higher regenerative ability. This is demonstrated in many, many animal studies. If you compare a bone marrow, adult bone marrow stem cells with cord blood stem cells, the cord blood stem cells 
work better at, for example, making new liver cells or making new heart cells. And um, also a very important aspect of cord blood cells is that you don't need to puncture the bone to extract bone marrow. Bone marrow puncture, bone marrow extraction can be a very painful procedure and in some patients you need to put them under general anesthesia and as you can imagine a lot of patients for example with heart disease or liver failure uh, have a very difficult time being put under general anesthesia. Now people argue that adult stem cells including bone marrow do not differentiate into all sorts of tissue. People say in the popular media that only embryonic stem cells can do that and as we know embryonic stem cells cause cancer. So here's proof that cord blood cells can actually become a wide variety of different tissues. Proof in an animal model. Uh, human cord blood CD34 cells were labeled with a green fluorescent protein through genetic engineering and injected in a fetal goat. When the goat matured it was sacrificed and expression of green human cells was assessed in different organs. And as you can see in the top panel, kidney, muscle, liver, spleen, heart, and lung all had green tissue, indicating that the human cells differentiated to these tissues, whereas the control goats did not. In terms of functional activity, as we talked about before, cord blood stem cells are very potent in regenerating damaged tissue. Here is a brain of a mouse. Uh, on the left hand side the mouse did not receive stem cells, on the right hand side it received cord blood CD34 cells and the circle, red circle, um, points to the area where the mouse was given an experimental stroke and as you can see that the mice who received stem cells that area actually seemed to have regenerated and if you read the publication in the Journal of Clinical Investigations uh, you can see that also, not only was there brain regeneration, but also functionally the mice who received human cord blood cells performed better. So today, in 2007, there's a wide variety of indications which could benefit from cord blood. Some of them are listed in this, um, in this figure. But the problem is, a lot of people have not stored their own cord blood. So, can one use cord blood from a non-autologous source, from the somebody else's cord blood. And the first question comes to the question of safety. We've recently published on this. Um, in the Journal of Translational Medicine, we've published a review of all the literature and a synopsis of some of the points we'll mention. Whole cord blood has been used since the 1930s without immune suppression as a source of fetal hemoglobin. This was also used in World War II when there was not enough nor, uh, peripheral blood available. In the journal Lancet in 2003, there was a report of 128 patients who were given cord blood and for, um, again, as a source of hemoglobin, and there was no adverse effects. Another pu uh, publication in 2005 reviewed 413 patients and again no adverse effects. Uh, at CellMedicine.com, at the Institute of Cellular Medicine, more and our and its affiliates, more than 500 injections of cord blood, allogenic cord blood, have been used with no immune suppression and no adverse effects. Only uh, two cases of rash were reported. Now, efficacy: if you administer cord blood from somebody else. People will argue that if you do not destroy the recipient immune system, they'll get um, the cord blood cells will get destroyed by the recipient if they're not from the same person. This appears not to be the case. A publication on Lancet showed that every mother contains stem cells from the baby that she carried even 30 years ago, um, even if the pregnancy was 30 years ago. Uh, in the company Osiris's clinical work, allogenic cells, not cord blood, but mesenchymal cells, which are found in the cord blood, have been demonstrated to have therapeutic efficacy without immune suppression. And there's a variety of studies showing that mothers benefit naturally from cells that have trafficked from the fetus into the mother and after the mother had the child the mother would benefit from the child's regenerative cells that have transferred. So in conclusion 
we believe there's many therapeutic uses for cord blood and sometimes you need to expand it, sometimes you need to differentiate it and match it. For more information, see stem cell medicine.